Hello everyone, it's Kruch and welcome to the 35th episode of Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Um, it's time for Balance Part 2. Um, let's see if it surprises us or not. So yeah, begin the story. As I promised, video on the 25th today. Mm, okay, it's lunchtime. Sayori, who usually buys her lunch, is making her way to the cafeteria like any other day. The clamor and bustle of the students is drowned by Sayori's impeccable skill of zoning out. However, her imagination is momentarily interrupted by the glimpse of a familiar pink-haired girl, Natsuki. Hey, that's Natsuki. I never run into the other club members around the school. Natsuki! Sari stands on her tiptoes and waves. Natsuki, who is busy walking and chatting with her friends, has noticed Sayori at first. Then, she glances over in Sayori's direction. Sayori waves enthusiastically. Following her friends, Natsuki quickly ducks around the corner. Hey, she definitely saw me. I don't know. Um, she doesn't she want to like claim that Sarah is her friend? Is it I don't know? Uh, would it be a shame or something? Monica is the first to arrive to the club meeting. Then Natsuki, Sari, having glanced through the window to see Natsuki already inside, is unable to work up enough courage to enter. Natsuki has been so distant with me. I was stupid to think she ever wanted to be friends. She only got excited because she got to share her manga. But aside from that, she doesn't even like me. I should just go home today. Um, sorry, but do you plan on going inside? No. Why? I'm sulking. Oh. Well, I'm sorry for bothering you. Excuse me. No, don't leave me. Oh, I, I stay here, then. I don't want to go in, I'm afraid of bothering Natsuki. I saw her at lunch today, so I waved and called out to her, but instead of saying hi, she just ran away from me. Really? Yeah, you're taking her time. Hmm, not bad. Hey, s sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, it was a joke. It just sounded like something stupid that I would do, from anxiety. From anxiety? Well, I just don't like attention being drawn to myself. Oh. Well, that makes sense based on the person you are. But Natsuki isn't shy like that at all. I thought we were friends. But it feels like every day she's just trying to distance herself more, trying to get closer. Um. Okay. It makes me feel like she was only spending time with me during the club because I was reading manga, but she doesn't actually want to be friends with me. Um, well, I feel like I'm missing a lot of context here. Was she in the middle of anything when you approached her? No, she was just walking with her friends. With her friends. Ray pauses for a moment. How would I put this? Terry, you're very fond of your friends, right? You always want to be spending time with them. Of course, I don't think there's anything more important to me. I mean, the best parts of my day are always with my friends. Besides that, I really hate being alone, so... You hate being alone? Sorry, not. We're very different people. I cherish my time alone. I wouldn't trade for anything. So I think... Well, if I was trying to have alone time, and it was being threatened b with an inter interruption, then... It would just... would not make me very happy. Yeah, but it doesn't have to do with Natsuki. She was already with her friends, not trying to be alone or anything. No, I think it's similar. It's... well, we're all friends in the club. But we have our own lives outside of the club as well. If you think about it, making new friends isn't come, isn't some casual occurrence that happens on a daily basis. A friendship is an invitation to interwine your li your lives, no, your lives together. By the capacity at which each person is ready to do that, to do that might be different. 
There are friends who just like to have fun together and others who talk every day and share every detail of their lives with each other. I think that when establishing a friendship, it's important to consider the comfort level of the other person. I mean, we don't really know much about Natsuki's life outside the club. It would be that she simply needs to make friends at her own pace, rather than just jump headfirst into a new commitment. But, I mean, Sai really was bothering her. I just really wanted to be good friends with her, so I treated her like one. Was I actually hurting her? Uh, I don't know, I'm sorry. My insight was really only based on what I understand about my own needs. And Natsuki and I are completely different, so... Why was I so selfish? Even if all this is true, then it still means I hurt her. I think I messed up. Yuri, with you, I think I was really careful to understand your needs when I was becoming friends with you. But I wasn't careful at all with Natsuki because she already seemed really social. I just took control of everything instead of looking for the right balance. We yeah, have the word balance. Now I hurt her and she doesn't want to talk to me. How could I let myself do this? Um, Sayori, I think that... Well, there was one time you told me something about the way I saw things in my head being different from reality. It's easy to automatically jump to the worst case scenario, but I think it's more likely that Natsuki doesn't harbor any ill feelings towards you. So, I think if you were to realistically consider the situation and how it would cause someone to feel, um... Uh, I'm bad at this. I'm sorry. You're a lot better than me at things like comforting and reassuring re reassuring people. Suddenly Sayori gives Yuri a general hug. Um, you're the best, Yuri. I'm sorry for bur burdening you with this. You're trying so hard for me. You're such a sweetheart. Uh, I just... It's not a burden. I enjoy listening to others. And my friends deserve happiness. Sayori beams. Well, I think I'm gonna give Natsuki some space. She should do what she wants. And if she does still want to be friends, then I'll learn her needs and I'll match her boundaries. Yeah, I'm sure that's the best. I wish I didn't feel so awful and guilty. It makes me feel desperate, like I need to make it out to her by trying to make her happy. But that's not what she needs, I just have to tell myself that. It hurts, but I guess it means I still need to grow. I really want to grow as a person. If it's to be better for my friends, I want that. That's very mature of you, Sayori. Haha. <laughs> I'm mature. Sayori hops up and down hops up and down her toes. So does that mean you'll be going home after all? So she shakes her head. I need to be here to show her that I respect her space. I'll just spend the club by myself today. Yuri not the understanding. You can go first. Okay. You're blocking the door. Oh, <laughs> Sari steps aside. By the way, for Yuri enters the club room, Sari interjects. You said that you and Natsuki are completely different, but I don't really think that's, sh that's true. I think you're actually really similar in a lot of ways. Yuri smiles and shakes her head. Sari, that's absurd. You're really silly sometimes. Yuri turns and enters the club room. After a moment, Sari follows. The club room is quiet. When Sayori walks in, Natsuki glances in her, di in her direction. Sayori smiles and gives Natsuki a quick wave before sitting down across the room. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Sayori decides it's, it's best to continue the manga she was reading, so she pulls it out. However, looks like Natsuki isn't reading today. She has a sheet of paper in front of her and is tapping a pen against her desk, staring at it. Oh, are we writing today? Monica speaks in a quiet voice. Unwilling to disturb the peace of the club room, she kneels down at Natsuki de Natsuki's desk. Hey! Natsuki pulls the sheet closer to her and covers it with her arms. Sorry, I didn't mean to peek. Whatever. I just wanted to see how everything was going. It's fine. Natsuki replies dismissively. She glances over at Sayori, who is focused on her manga. Monica follows Natsuki's gaze. I think she's mad at me. How come? I'm I'm busy right now. Ask me later. Monica falls silent. Natsuki looks back down at her paper. 
She inches her head away from the top margin, allowing Monica to see. It says, to Sayori. Understanding, Monica smiles. She places a hand on Natsuki's shoulder and whispers softly, I'm proud of you. I think this is what like Sayori wanted to tell that um, it's like writing poetry is the best way to express your feelings so she wants to express them in a correct way and then share it with Sayori and it would be the best way to get to know each other. Natsuki looks away but makes no motion to remove Monica's hand. Monica gives Natsuki's shoulder a quick squeeze before standing back up and pulling away. Yeah, let's see. The end of the club meeting passes. Yuri has already departed. So has Monica, after checking on Sayori and Natsuki to ensure that wouldn't, they wouldn't stay too late. Sayori was determined to finish her manga volume before heading out, since the end was approaching. However, with Natsuki also staying late for an unknown reason, a silent tension hangs in the air. After finishing the volume, Sayori brings it to the closet and to put it away. She slides it back onto the shelf while Natsuki watches. Then, Natsuki gets up and pulls it back out in the order to return it to its proper location. Sorry, I didn't know where it's supposed to go. It's fine. The two fall silent again, avoiding e eye contact. They both look like they're about to say something, but neither can break the silence. A moment passes. Well, I'll be on my way. See you tomorrow. Mm. She returns away to hide her paint expression, then walks away from the closet. If there was any proof Natsuki no longer wanted to be friends, this was it. Defeated, Sayori carries herself out of the club room. Once in the hallway, Sayori takes a deep breath and hits her palms against her cheeks to, cl to clear her head a little. Uh, um, suddenly, Natsuki's stammering voice calls from behind. Natsuki? Startled, Sayori turns back around to face Natsuki. Sayori fidgets and anxiously continues with a shaking voice. So, we've got it. We've got uh, the next CG. Ah, I have a lot of things to say. M me too. But you go first. Natsuki bites her lip and can't stay still. Well, first of all, she cuts herself short, struggling to continue. Trying to force the worst out, words out, she stamps her foot and hops up and down, and down a little. I'm sorry for the things I did at lunch, and I'm sorry for just being kind of mean lately. It's really hard for me to like. I mean, I'm not good with things that make me uncomfortable, especially when it comes to like like feelings and stuff so yeah she blushes she's blushing i mean uh, face burning nancy clams up again instead of continuing she simply holds up a sheet of paper for Sari to take <clears throat> the best place in the world i love my bedroom it's full of bright colors and soft things. The sunlight shines in and makes everything sparkle. It's the best place in the world. It has all my treasures, all my books, my collections, my memories. All of my dreams were burned in this room. It's the best place in the world. It has all my secrets, all my failures, my fears, my feelings. Sometimes it feels so fragile that the door will break at the slightest touch. But it's still the best place in the world. But when someone knocks, I get scared. I brace my arms against the loose hinds. Please don't break, don't come in. I'm not ready. It's my best place in the world. The knocking won't stop. I block the door with furniture, and I peek through the keyhole, and I panic. I'm trapped in the best place in the world. 
I'm not ready to share my favorite place. I need to clean my secrets and make my bed to hide my nightmares. I need to touch them to put them away, to see them again. I have so much to do and I'm scared. I'm not ready. But it's still my favorite place. I still want to share it. However long it takes, if you wait patiently, I'll eventually, oh, I eventually open the door and I show you the best place in the world. Okay, that was a really beautiful poem. I think it's my favorite from Natsuki so far. It's not even a metaphor. I mean, it has one simple metaphor, this best place, which is generally uh, her character, her hobbies, uh, basically herself. She's she despite wanting to share it with Sayori she just feels like Sayori wanted to do it so fast and she's not ready yet just like written but she just felt that Sayori is pressing her too much and she felt so uncomfortable actually panicked I think so yeah a really nice poem it's a poem, but I thought, well, I sucked it up so that I could work things out with you, so just, just be happy about it, please. Sherry smiles deeply from the bottom of her heart. I'm happier than I could express. I feel so awful, but I'm so happy that you would do this for me. I actually realized before the club meeting today that I made a mistake. I got so caught up in the chance to get closer to you that I forgot to think about what you wanted. And that you probably have different ways you like to make friends. Um, about like friendship stuff. I mean, it's okay. I understand, so you don't have to force yourself to talk about it. Your poem did a good job. So don't force yourself if you're not ready yet, okay? That's key nuts. You don't have to feel like you did anything wrong. It was my fault and I'm sorry. I wasn't mad at you today or anything like that. I actually felt really guilty and wanted to give you space. I was thinking it's silly that I just approach you all the time and that I should just let you approach me when you want to. Just whatever makes you comfortable. I respect that from now on. Friendship should always start with those things, with the right balance. Let's key nuts again. One thing about that, hmm? Well, I don't want to have to approach you all the time either. I just want it to be balanced, like you said. Sorry, nuts. I understand. We'll make sure of that together then. Well, anyway, now that the two of them have found common ground, that Skiff finds it easier to speak more freely again. I'm not gonna be like, share my poems all the time now or anything like that. But, I guess it wouldn't hurt to do once in a while, only the best ones. So you better like them, because otherwise I might change my mind. Like anything you do, Natsuki. I... I was just saying. More importantly, I have to tell you about my new boyfriend. Huh? Oh, from the manga. <laughs> Wait, I need to guess who it is. You definitely won't be able to guess. The two walk down the hallway together. Oh my god, we have so much to talk about. Don, I should have told you to save the last two chapters so I could see your reaction to the big reveal. Oh, you wanted to enjoy it with me. That's so cute. <clears throat> Oh, shush. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sayori is really good at making friends, making everyone happy. Okay, you unlock two more wallpapers, which is this one, like upgraded the DLC menu, and um, yeah, that's taking selfie. 
Making a selfie of herself. Okay, this one and now the most dependent thing. A new poem. Poem from Natsuki. Distributed at special events in the past. <coughs> I named my pen, the expression express, my feelings aboard, with a ticket to you, no room for stammers, no lies, no extra stops, no compromise, station screaming by, attendants saying hi, one ticket to you, please and thank you, take a headphone and doze, no bumps in the rails, just thumbs in my heart, and loops in my letters, and clouds in the sky, and dreams in your eyes. Hey, wake up. The train has arrived. Expression express. Destination you. Choo choo. Yeah. Yeah, like the sound of the train, I guess. Uh, here's the CG and yeah that should be all for today so yeah thank you all for watching this video uh, it looks like only four are remaining mm, this one is gonna be really interesting and this one as well but yeah we'll see about that so Thank you all for watching this episode. See you tomorrow in the next one. Take care and good bye.